Hi, this is Terry Spradlin and Aide Sucre. And we are in Guatemala City, uh, Guatemala, and we're doing a missions trip this week. And uh, Heidi and I are going to do a Bible study in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 23. But first, I'm going to ask Heidi a couple questions. Uh, what do you know about vegetable gardening? <laughs> well, actually, I used to have a vegetable garden. Okay. So I know that it takes a lot of work, and sometimes, uh, you know, you need to protect it against plague and, you know, keep... It's a constant. To, to be able to see the fruit, you have to work at it hard. Okay. What kind of inner alarm, if any, alerts you to the fact that a person is phony? The fruit, you know. <laughs> oh, once I heard something that I, it was very interesting that you can get a dry tree and with the dried out branches and just kind of um, tie uh, oranges to it. You oh, know? yeah. That, that would be a funny picture. You can tell that that fruit is just tied there because of the, the tree is dried. So mm, That's good. That's a tell. good, fun example, huh? Okay, uh, what is your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit is pineapple. Okay. Start with chapter 7, and we're going to read verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ra uh, ra what is ravenous. Ravenous. ravenous wolves. Okay, against whom did Jesus warn us? Against false prophets. And um, why? Well, because the what it says that they appear to be something, but they're really something else. Okay. And what do false prophets look like on the outside? They look, uh, they have sheep's clothing, which means they look harmless. Okay. What are false prophets like inwardly? Like wolves. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to read verse 16 and verse 20. Okay. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle, thistles? Wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. Okay, how did Christ say we would recognize false prophets? By their fruit. What does nature reveal about a tree and its fruit? Um, that means that a good tree brings forth good fruit. Okay, verses 17 and 18. <clears throat> Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. What kind of fruit does a good tree bear? Okay. Yeah, good fruit. Right. Uh, and then what kind of fruit or what type of product grows on bad trees? Evil fruit. Right. Okay. Uh, 19. 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Okay, what happens to trees that fail to produce good fruit? They're cast into the fire and cut down. Okay, uh, verse 21. Not everyone shall saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Who, who but will, he oh, sorry. That, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. <clears throat> so who will enter into the kingdom of heaven? Uh, those who do the will of the Father. Okay. Uh, how will some people try to talk their way into heaven? Uh, calling on to the Lord. Okay, you want to read verse 22 to go with that? Yes. Sorry. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. How will some people try to talk their way into heaven? Well, they will start uh, naming things they've done for the Lord. Okay, and what credentials or accomplishments will some people claim? Um, casting out devils and um, and prophesying. Okay. Uh, in verse 23, go ahead and read that first. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How will Jesus respond to these impostors? That he doesn't know them. Okay. And what necessary? what is necessary for us to enter into heaven? Um, what's necessary? It would be, you know, to... Um, you know, to be truthful about your walk with the Lord and not, um, you know, to be real. Okay. What, why do we continue to sin if we have Christ in our hearts and the Holy Spirit in our lives? Well, because um, 
because you know uh, sin we have we have a sinful nature so of course you know even though our our spirit uh, turns to the Lord our flesh never uh, converts okay what does the passage tell us about the importance of doing good works um, well I think the fact you know just like a good tree bears good fruit well doing good works actually speaks about what our life is in Christ Amen. Man, how do you how do good works and salvation fit together? Well, um, well, because you can't say ha, being saved is having <coughs> Jesus in your heart and in your life, and Jesus is love. So of course, um, that's kind of like a seed in your heart. And of course, if you have Jesus as a uh, a seed of love in your heart, you're going to produce fruit. So you're going to uh, obviously. Uh, you know, give love to people and do good works because you have uh, Jesus in your heart. So salvation, once you're saved and you have Jesus, you want to express that love that Jesus has for them. Okay. Mm. Uh, how can people be religious and yet not follow Christ? Well, because some people think um, following the Lord is filled with procedures that are vain and that have nothing to do with the real message of love of Christ. So a lot of people... Uh, can follow, let's say, the manual and put a check mark on all things they need to do, but not really have a heart, the heart like Jesus had for the sinners. Okay. Uh, what kind of good works have you been producing lately? Mm, well, I would say I'm ministering to people here in Guatemala, and um, I, um, yeah, just um, sharing the Word of God and what God has done in my life. Okay. Uh, what evidence in your life points to your relationship with Jesus? Um, well, because I'm not the same as I used to be. I'm a new creation, and my the way I make decisions, now it's not on my own understanding, but since I want to please God, I seek for God's guidance. What spiritual discipline can you use to cultivate, like they do in, gar in gardening, uh, to cultivate your soul this week? Well, <clears throat> read the Word every day, uh, kind of like looking for weeds in a garden. Uh, examine myself and see what it is I have to work on that day. And, you know, be meticulous, not just overlook like, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I'm good. But when you're gardening, you actually have to, you know, stop and look underneath the leaves and, you know, pay a real pro close attention. So I think as far as for us, you would have to, you know, really sit down and, and think about uh, what you do, what your motives are for doing what you do, and, you know, kind of examine yourself on a daily basis. And ask the Lord to help you in those areas that you need uh, help in. Okay, in what area of your life can you place more emphasis on doing good works each day this week? And I think being loving people more in the sense of <clears throat> sharing my time with others. Sometimes people... You know, you can get really busy doing all these things, but sometimes people need somebody to talk to and and sometimes to save, to have somebody and to give the message of Christ, you need to spend time with that person. Mm -hmm. and you need to uh, really, you know, listen to them. So I, I think it would be kind of, you know, because I'm so busy trying to uh, give some of my time to somebody that needs it. Sure. I kind of felt like this week in the schools when we were ministering that um, a lot of times when you're doing ministry you're busy because you have a plan and a schedule and things that are going forth and, and what needs to be done. And I, I kind of felt like when we were doing ministry in the schools this week that when we sat down and uh, at the end and we talked to them about the Lord and about receiving Him and taking the time to do that, not being in a hurry, but to continue to talk to them that it allows them um, more of an opportunity to hear feedback from them. What did you learn? What did we say? What was this about? And um, I was just wondering, how did you feel about that this week? Well, I just felt that a lot of people um, just wanted to talk. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of some some of the girls that I kind of shared, you know, little bits of things with them. They were like eager to listen and eager to know. Mm -hmm. So you know, maybe. Sometimes the time structure kind of gets in the way of what maybe the Holy Spirit wants to do. Just mm -hmm. because, you know, we're in a fixed schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, because ministering to someone sometimes doesn't have 
anything to do to just come out and do a good work, but actually oh, invest yeah. in your life and another life, you know, it takes time and, you know, so. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that this week. Like I, and I agree with the thing that you said that um, listening, like that they were able to have the opportunity to say what they wanted to say or that we were able to take the time to listen to, to, their, their, to their, what they wanted to say. Um, I think it gives you an opportunity, um, uh, even even in a salvation call, because a lot of time I've seen a lot of salvation calls in my life. But you know, to say to somebody, you know, what does this what does this call mean to you? Like, um, you know, what what you know, what is what does receiving Christ mean to you? Or uh, what what did this what did this drama mean to you? Or what did this skit mean to you? Or what did you you know what did you get from this today? Not just you know, here's something that we just did, and you know, uh, we're just going to say, you know, for God to love the world, you know, and then walk away. But you know, we don't want to just walk away. We want to know what did you get in your heart from this? And and I and I what I really liked was the teacher's um, response to say, you know, thank you so much for coming and doing this for the students. That the students. Um, uh, Maybe the maybe the world's ready like now in a lot of cases where there's been so much rebellion uh, and um, uh, people wanting to do things and and um, do it their own way that maybe they're willing to listen you know to the plan of the Lord and and what what that plan is and and say hey you know I like that plan you know I li- I like his plan and I I want that plan for my life I don't want to do it my own way anymore I want to try to do it your way, Lord, and I want to learn what that means, you know, how, how do I do it your way, Lord, and I think that's important for kids, yeah. you know, to see them have that opportunity. As a leader, it's always, for me, it's always not, also not only about what we do out there, but what we do as a team, and that has its challenges in itself, its highs and lows in, in what you're doing in, in ministry as well. Okay, well, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you give us to minister to these people, Lord. And just as your word says, Lord, just help us be real and genuine, Lord, and uh, help us and work in our lives so that we will bear much fruit, Lord. That everybody that sees us today that could actually, you know, see uh, what you can do in our lives and how you, you change and transform lives, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus Jesus is Lord Lord over Guatemala City. City.